gotta tell you, you are even cuter than I thought you'd be. Ooh, uh, you probably didn't know, but a bunny can call another bunny cute, but when other animals do it, it's a little... <gasps> I am so sorry. The great thing, of course, is this is a, you know, a very funny movie. This is a very fun movie, but it actually deals with a lot of big themes, too. And there's a lot here about stereotyping and basically, uh, you know, uh, trying to sort of deal with uh, different races getting along. Where is it great for you to get to explore those themes in the context of this movie? As an audience member, yes. I mean, I have to say, I really, when I was making the movie, I didn't quite understand what its impact would be on me. I mean, I understood sort of the more overlying theme of, you know, anyone can be anything, which is against Nick's, you know, you are what you are idea. Um, but I was really, I was surprised by how gutted I was, having worked on this movie for years, by how gutted I was by, uh, yes, yeah, some of those more underlying messages. And uh, it's not that I didn't know that they were coming, because I did, but the way that they do it is so profound while being so, I mean, frankly, subtle. I mean, as you know, I, I feel like Disney so respects their audiences all the time. They let us do the work. And uh, being empowered like that meant that I could really go there and be moved. And I cried every time I've seen the movie. The job that, that we do as, as voice actors is, is so small. I mean, you know, they deserve all the credit as far as tackling these, these issues, as you say. And uh, they're, they're just, they're so subtle and, and, and sophisticated in the way in which they deliver that stuff. And, and you know, we basically, I don't want to overly, you know, belittle or be false modest about what what it is we're doing but truly we're, we're just talking and you know we're delivering these lines that they wrote and uh and these stories that uh these these plot sort of variations that that, that kind of feature these things uh at moments that are kind of buried underneath these themes are kind of buried underneath these big plot developments and so you don't really feel the medicine going down and uh, it's amazing what what they can do, and they they do it with every film. The fact that the messages that are that are communicated in this film happen to be so topical right now is just is just great luck. Mm -hmm. Well, it uh, came from our research. Honestly, it didn't start out that way. We we were looking for uh, what's going to be the story of this film, and we always start with research to make sure that we kind of become experts on these subjects mm -hmm. before we ever dive into story. And in doing research into the mammal world, we found out that there's a very interesting fact about nature: is that 90 percent of animals, mammals in the world are prey animals and 10% are predators. And we thought, that's very interesting. If the, even if these animals have evolved and created this amazing metropolis, is it possible that they didn't completely discard this mistrust of each other? And it gave us a great setup for a buddy movie, which is two characters that are completely different from one another, from different sides of the animal world, but in coming together they uh, educate each other and learn about each other and grow together as characters. And it was just something that no one had ever really tackled before in uh, an animated animal film. And that, that really is where it organically came from. And it does seem very, very timely now uh, that it's come out, but it was never the plan to have an intellectual idea that we were going to prove. It really came from our desire to tell the most emotional and effective story. We gotta go. I'm not leaving. This is a crime scene. Well, it's going to be an even bigger crime scene if Mr. Big finds me here, so we're leaving right now. Oh, Raymond, and is that Kevin? Long time no see. And speaking of no see, how about you forget you saw me? Huh? For old time's sake? That's a no. You are a big Disney fan, I know this. So what is it like to now be in a Disney movie and basically know you get to live forever through the magic of Disney? <laughs> I get to live at Disney forever is what <laughs> is what's sort of magical to me. Um, I mean, I can't really wrap my brain around it, to be honest, because it was my biggest dream was to voice an animated character. And I thought that being Snow White on Once Upon a Time was going to be as close as I ever got to that, and that was going to be fine as a Disneyphile, because um, I had been auditioning for Disney films for years for animated features, but to have had it really come along, and I'm only almost 38, I don't really know where I go from here. Like, beyond sequels, I'd be happy to retire. It, it is a great sort of career bucket list kind of thing to, to check off. I, I really feel uh, privileged that, that I got the call to, to be a part of one of these things. And, um, uh, you know, and then, then you see the finished product and you're like, my God, it's, it's, it, they're just so good at what they do. I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a proud guy and, and my kids think I'm pretty cool for being in it too. And it was a, a big win.